<laughs> okay. So on the show today, Chris van der Weide, I can't fucking say her name. She's Dutch, but she's cool. I like her a lot. She's an intimacy coach. She's a tantra teacher. Um, we're going to be talking about lockdown sex, intimacy in the apocalypse, how your relationship can survive this crazy ass time. Chris, welcome. Thank you, Mark. That was a beautiful introduction. I told you it would be. Now you're in a tent now, right? Uh, a yurt. I am. Um, and and in Mongolia? <laughs> obviously in the Netherlands. In the Netherlands, Utrecht area, right? Well, a little under, but yeah. A little under. That's a little under is France. <laughs> Sorry, I'm teasing your small country. Hello to all our Dutch listeners. So um, let's hear about you first, Chris. Let's, let's let listeners get to know you a little bit. So how did you get interested in the body and in intimacy? It's been a long journey, actually. I got interested in the body and in intimacy, I think, already growing up. My parents were involved in Tantra, teaching it as well. Um, I studied theater, I studied dance, the body in performance, I did this various places in the world and somehow it was very unsatisfying to me that I was always looking for this uh, spark or just the juice of there must be more to this and uh, when I was doing my master degree of the body in performance and somatic movement in London, I just felt like that whole business was elbowing each other out and I was um, fed up with it so I moved to Mexico and spent three years on the shore in a spiritual community and that's where things really started to fall into place for me and at this moment I am offering a mixture of all of that together I could say uh, through uh, under the name of unveiling intimacy okay so you're a, you're a tantra baby so you're, you're I'm a tantra baby. second generation <laughs> tantrita. <laughs> That's cute. I've never been called a tantra baby. <laughs> tantra baby con conceived in a seven hour long love making session in a mountain in India. Um, I'm afraid not because uh, my dad wasn't there quite. <laughs> damn, damn, we, we missed it. Yeah, <laughs> he wasn't there. How, how, does, how is that possible? Well, he wasn't really? in the tantric part. It's my mom and my stepdad. Oh, okay. Got it. Got yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. And uh, any big influences in this field, just to sort of place your training for people? What do you mean by that? Like uh, schools, you know, like there's different schools of uh, training or different teachers. Ah, for sure. So in Mexico, I spend a long time at a place named Ridaya Yoga. Uh, I feel heavily influenced by uh, Margot Anand, Sky Dancing Tantra. Um, here in the Netherlands, I've studied with Wild Tantra. There is this woman, uh, Pema Gitama. A lot of it finds it, root, find it roots in uh, both Osho and traditional Tantra and uh, more modern Western psychology also. Okay. And why do you do it now? What is it that kind of motivates you to keep working in this field? Because I find it it's such a sweet and f fruitful entrance for people to find opening in. Like right now, the word Tantra, right, it has this connotation with sex. So for the majority of people, especially here in the West, if you say the word Tantra, they will think it's, uh, it's about sex, it's about lovemaking, it's about spicing up your sex life, etc., etc. And actually, it's an ancient, ancient tradition deriving from thousands of years back and holding within it a pointer for truth. And it uses sexual energy within within their practices but from an original standpoint it was maybe maybe five percentage of the practices and only yeah. given from teacher to student from teachers to students so right now we're looking at this tiny tiny bit of the whole vast scope that tantra can be and we are applying it in the west and uh, found out a new name for it neo tantra mm -hmm. but it's super fruitful because sexuality is something that people actually are interested in right everyone wants sex or has sex or if they don't have it they want it or want to know how to improve it because it's this field of oof, 
so the potent objective interest for most people and just just yeah. so you're not spreading misinformation that as i understand it modern neo chantra has almost no connection with ancient lineages I mean, yeah, if you look at true. Chris Wallace's kind of research and stuff like that. So I just, just want to, you know, have that clear to listeners because I keep hearing this thing that, oh, we, you know, this is a practice that goes back thousands of years and that's nearly always bullshit and at best kind of unverifiable. And, um, uh, you know, it was a tiny part of what's of, of classical Tantra was the sexual practices. But in any event, many people find Neo-Tantra useful and helpful. So kind of why not? I just a bit of, I'm a bit of a stickler for historical truth. Hey, that's very, uh, very good. Yeah, and very true. So what I'm most interested in right now is this current situation that many people find themselves in, where um, people are in their houses with partners, and many of us are on you know, lockdown, as it's sometimes called. People are not allowed to leave the house or leaving the house a whole lot less than before. And they find themselves in these situations where maybe their intimate partner is the only person they're around. Um, walking in the park today most people were couples i did see parents and children or sort of grown children and elderly parents and but the majority of people that were there not on their own were with people i guess were their intimate partners and there's a just this incredible uh, potential pressure or potential opportunity that's there right now for many of the people in this weird covid backdrop so yeah i'd love to hear your views on um, what this might bring out well, this could go in many directions because you're pointing it right there. It could go either one way, right? This is an amazing opportunity to be together 24 seven, to actually have time at hand to, but then you should really know how to make use of it. Otherwise you can drive each other berserk. Um, so both of them are happening and I see both of them happening around me and actually quite a few people have contacted with me with uh, either success stories or going berserk in the midst of it. So we could talk beginning. about both. We're just beginning, huh? right? So we're just yeah. beginning. So I mean, I've, I've already, <laughs> I mean, like, this could be going on a long time. And it's For fresh, sure. Pressures in relationship. I've heard of communication difficulties, people just winding each other up. I've also heard of people saying, oh, great, we're having loads of sex for the first time in ages. Or, oh, there's a, there's a romance to this situation. It's like a common enemy. You know, me and my wife were talking about, right, the food's getting delivered. Finally, we've got a food delivery. We're going to have to make it clean. This is the procedure. I'm like, I've been like this, like hunter, like going out, right, I've got some, uh, uh, some toilet roll or some hand gel, you know, I'm bringing it back to the house, like some victorious caveman going out into the dangerous. And there's a sort of um, bonding romance to this shared danger as well. So maybe let's. It's start. sweet, yeah. It's the connecting. Sweetness. You have a common enemy, right? A common enemy, common challenge, adversity to work against. You know, things yeah. right. We've got to get enough food. We've got to get this. Okay, we all know what about the house, and then also <laughs> just like really domestic shit. Like Mark, can you not leave so much mess? Because we, we used to have a cleaner. The cleaner's gone. Okay, it's like you know, Mark. What about this chore? Mark, what about this space? Daria, can you give me some space here? So some very just practical little micro strains you know that i can imagine if we didn't have good communication which i think we do could quite quickly develop into into stresses and then who do you talk to about that stress right like it's not like you can go to the pub and vent to your 10 friends <laughs> no but you are i mean there are a few good points in what you're saying just now provide each other with space and make clear agreements about that I could elaborate on that further. Create ways to communicate, uh, specific forms of communication that will help both of you speak your truth without the other person interfering, without the other person replying, like creating space for uh, the absence of reactivity, basically. Uh, what was the last thing you said? Ah, a network. So still very much you're gonna want to contact other people you're gonna not want to find your resolution with each other all the time. Uh, maybe you want to, but in all likelihood, it won't happen. We can still talk to people, right? I'm talking to you now, we can still talk to exactly. people. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Let's break those down then, because I think each one is a gold mine for people who maybe are newer to this, don't have these skill sets. Um, so clear communication, let's talk about what that is, what that might look like, say a bit more about that. So clear communication, Oh, I could start at this from so many angles. What's going to be um, useful for people in this kind of situation? Like, imagine a couple, they've heard a tantrum, they haven't really been on any workshops, and they're now going, okay, we need something extra because we're in this pressure cooker. 
So my number one to go to practice is called inquiry. Mm -hmm. And it's not self-inquiry, which uh, derives from Ramana Maharshi. People are often confused when I use those words. But it's actually a sharing method in which you take turns speaking. So you set a timer, and this can be anything between 5 to 20 minutes. And you're just sitting opposite one each other. And one person holds space for the other person to speak. And you're not necessarily going to speak about everything that happened to you or about the discussion you had or about yada, dada, dada, but about what is present right here, what now, right now. What are you feeling in your body? What does it feel like to be in this moment? There might be discomfort, there might be anger, there might be fear. Like the whole scale of emotion emotional range might pass but can you learn to really investigate what that feels like in your body and become well if you like quite metaphorical so instead of saying i'm angry how does that actually feel how does anger feel tangibly in your body maybe your belly is contracted maybe your chest is more tight yeah Okay, so we've lost some beginners here so just the key parts here key parts here is right, it's good key parts here is that this turn taking so unlike yeah. a normal conversation where there's a certain habit or you interrupt each other or whatever there's a turn taking so people get a real chart okay i can really speak now and it's in the present moment rather than in necessarily the story and there might be some yeah. other little rules in there, like speak from the first person and don't use black. Exactly. And some other kind of things. And like don't that. react to each other. We're so uh -huh. deeply, the habit of reacting is so deeply ingrained with nodding, with even internally saying, ah, that happened to me too. Or when you say this or that, it makes me feel like <laughs> you're just, uh, like in Tantra, we call that you're just being the Buddha for There's the other person you're offering presence right you're offering exactly so it's a meditation but instead of people might know meditating on the breath or the body you're actually just being as present as you can to the other person and i find it's very useful even though i think my, me, me, me and my wife might have pretty good communication sometimes to make that space and say right we're going to do three minutes each way or five minutes or and actually exactly. have that sort of space that's really clean to do that yeah, I do that every day. I do it with my friend with whom I live here. I do it with my partner. I do it, actually, I do it with all my intimate relationships and preferably on a high frequency. What does that mean, sir? Um, I mean, frequently. Oh, frequency, like, like quite a lot. Okay. Yeah. I thought I meant like the space vibes with high frequency. <laughs> no, I, thought, I, God, I heard, Chris I is heard how out of me, man. Yeah. It's just, I got you on precisely to not have that. Okay, God, cool, we're on the same page. And what if someone said, you know what, that's still a bit kooky and weird. Just give me some tips for communication. Like, just give me some top tips. Have you got anything even lower level than this practice, which some people just won't do. You know, there are times when I ask Daria about this, let's do this. And she's like, no, 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 I can't be bothered. She's not into that so much sometimes. So any other sort of just general communication tips? So just breathe a few times before you respond. Got it. That, I think, <laughs> is your to-go-to. -to. Right. Yeah. Pause. and indeed indeed you just mentioned speak from the i person this will be fruitful for uh, all of us at any given moment in time speaking from my experience rather than you're doing it wrong the thing i see you do makes me feel like da 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 da, da. yeah so not holding pe other people responsible for your emotions speaking from from your own personal point of view i mean the non-violent communication stuff's good isn't it around looking at denial. absolutely absolutely play. and if you're bringing up nvc what's really a good method as well is repeating what you think the other person said paraphrasing yeah yeah so what i think i hear you say is etc and then you can check is that correct right and as a question that way if you're wrong it's still helpful because you clarify clarifies things yeah exactly okay so what chris what i hear you saying is that paraphrasing is really important for couples is that what you said that is what i'm saying yeah <laughs> great so I'm just giving a paraphrase all right so <laughs> see what i did there come on <laughs> nah. it's audio only they can't see that gesture all right <laughs> so what else have we got here then so this paraphrasing these tips boundaries as well right like a for big, sure to ask for what you want to be able to say honey would you be able to wash up within one hour of eating is that possible is that something you're willing to commit to like being able to ask for what you want and me being able to say, for example, 
um, you know what, we had an agreement that, that you wouldn't put your clothes in this room. I really, you like this room for meditation and yoga. Would you mind putting your clothes outside? You know, that was a boundary. You, you know, you said you wouldn't do that. Like being able to hold each other accountable for agreements too. Absolutely. So you have clear agreements and you have clear consent. Mm -hmm. Clear yeses, clear noes. And if there's unclarity, you clarify it. And silence, I would say, is a big, important part of communication as well. Creating times, maybe a set time in the day in which you do not communicate. And you might even want to go as far as no cuddles, no, well, no eye contact is taking it a bit rigorous, but really feel as if you're having alone time. Right. That period so of the space day. space where you leave people alone. I've seen this quite gendered in some ways, but I think it's important for all of us too space to leave people alone and also like sometimes I, th I think people can over touch and over talk and i noticed that like today i sort of commuted down the corridor to my office and i've been in here all day and now i have this like urge to go back and see my wife this evening and there's a ah oh, there's been a bit of separation even in the space of a fairly small three room apartment so it's um we've had that separation which means the coming together is quite nice rather than just exactly. like constantly being in each other's space. Yeah, you don't want to become a, a, a melted together melting pot. <laughs> Couple. Of no. and, and in normal day life, that's easier because you both have, in all likelihood, you both have different occupations. You don't both have different uh, circles of friends, etc. cetera. Right. So it's more easy to maintain that. And right now you're going to really have to cultivate that. Yeah, it's unconscious going there for that. And as you say, reaching out to other friends too, to be like, hey, I'm going to call Absolutely. up my mate, Billy Dasa. I want to kind of talk to him. Or, hey, I can see my wife's really tired of hearing about my work because that's all I ever talk about. Maybe I'll phone someone who actually really likes hearing about my work. <laughs> you know, like, it's like that basic consideration, you know? Yeah, yeah. And what about if you just get sick of each other? So you're bouncing around this box a few months from now, a few weeks from now. It's just like, oh, I kind of love you, honey, but you're driving me nuts. You know, is it, what do you do then? Ooh. In all honesty, I think if you, like it might be a bold statement, but I think if you actually do these like practices and create conscious space for communication, conscious space for distance, conscious space for intimacy, conscious lines outwards, you're not going to get sick of each other. And if you are getting sick of each other completely, you might want to reconsider your relationship. Well, there's definitely going to be relationships that break up and there's this, you know, a lot of um, Chinese couples split up, you know, due to lockdowns there. There's some data on that now. Um, I think it's also perfectly healthy couples that will just go a bit crazy with each other, even if for I sure. So good. also have compassion for yeah. that. Yeah. We are in an unnatural situation. Unnatural behavior will occur. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What about sex then? Let's talk about that. So we let's also, do it. Let's do it. It's on the computer. We can't. Um, so there's also um, this idea of polarity that we've talked about separation already, right? Like separating mm -hmm. out, those, not merging. And that's saying that's also a pretty wise principle just sexually, right? Absolutely. You want to have time apart or at least energetically, you want to have time apart so that you can inhabit your own, let's say, energy field. Is this word uh, beginner enough? Not really. Try again. <laughs> so that you can inhabit your own body, your own being, and meet your partner in their body, in their being, as if you're going on a first date almost. Nice. So evidently that's not going to happen because you're in a lockdown situation. You already you know each other good day. enough. You could be like, exactly. honey, I could send my wife text like, honey, can I, let's go to the movies at eight. I've got a nice movie on Netflix you're going to like. Can you maybe dress up? You know, I'll put on a shirt. Well, precisely. Have a little precisely. date in the living room later, you know, like actually set that up. That could be kind of nice. That could be really, really nice. And remember those times where you were just getting to know each other and how sparkly it felt and how you're kind of like touching around the space, feeling, is having all your senses open. This is a main, main thing. Actually, this time is super, super fruitful to become more aware in your sensorial perception. And you can uh, use 
this lockdown for that it's almost like when to we great so extent much, yeah I, I think of it like we have so much quantity of time with a partner in a relationship but even more so now mm-hmm. that it, we can lose the quality like the you know, hey let's do a massage for half an hour hey let's actually really listen to each other hey let's go on a date you know let's have some good sexy time like like the quality can get lost in the amount of quantity of time you're with each other that's why you really need to allocate time and space for specific aims getting the practicalities of the house done allocate time and space for that having your regular your daily check-in moment allocate time and space for that silence allocate time and space for that intimacy sex allocate time and space really, for that. it sounds and like especially a and this is pretty Germanic, like, like, is this sex schedule now, we have the intimate time allocated. Like, it's all sounding a bit like a schedule, a bit well, like you're heavy, speaking you know? to a Germanic lady, mister. Yeah, yeah, Dutch is basically German, but a bit kinder with some, some mild COVID symptoms in the throat. Uh, uh. You know? so. <laughs> no, no, but listen to me, because what I'm trying to say with that yeah. is that normal, in our normal schedules, we, uh, have times in which we usually make love right and for many of us it's later in the day it's before we fall asleep or it might be first thing in the morning which is already a better scenario in my opinion and now we have the opportunity to create a moment of love making midday yeah 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 nice time to and fall, that's, I think. Yeah, yeah 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 that's gonna really really change how you're gonna experience love making with one another yeah also with yourself by the way we could speak about this too well this is kind of episodes for the couples i think we're going to do another episode for the people who are in this alone because that is a big deal and it's something i want to yeah. address actually but i i kind of i feel like for this one let's focus on the couples and we'll do another one which will be more about dealing with the loneliness now there's something that's on my radar and i'm certainly you know i said to my wife i'm so grateful i'm here with you and not on my own for this because that you know just just from a touch point of view let alone a sex point of view exactly i could manage a couple of months without sex but without touch that that's not, not cool you know yeah exactly yeah so love to everyone out there who's listening to this on their own yeah actually you know what let's go there a little bit now so what, okay. what are your what are your top tips for those of those who are on their own don't have the possibility of uh, you know a partner touch yourself <laughs> it sounds uh, a bit blunt but i really 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 mean it touch yourself a lot and also here create time and space to consciously touch yourself so self massage um anything you can think of that engages the senses make yourself a nice meal uh take time and space to enjoy it to really taste the different flavors make yourself a bath if you have that luxury or a warm shower yeah. use oil smells so actually a real um, sensual experience rather than just kind of crack yeah. it off kind of thing the race to the orgasm kind of normal normal style Hey, I wouldn't recommend that to anyone. <laughs> Tantra <laughs> girls. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So what are, what are people who just they have got that loneliness going on? You know, what can, how can we, there's emotional needs you can meet, talking to people, self-touch. It's, well, I imagine this is going to be pretty tough on people. Absolutely. Absolutely. If you have the um, possibility to go out into nature, go out into nature as much as you can because this is gonna in all likelihood be your biggest source of feeling connected to a bigger whole yeah well i did a celibate period um you know it was the hardest day of my life no it wasn't a day um i did a celibate (laughs) (laughs) good joke huh i did a celibate period (laughs) <laughs> gotcha. I did a celebration for 40 days and 40 nights before my 40th birthday. And um, I found nature almost um, sort of soothingly, femininely erotic in, in, in some sense. Like it was definitely one of the things that I was like, okay, well, I'm, I'm not having sex for 40 days, but I still need the feminine quality. Eh? If listeners get offended by that term, oh, no, go fuck yourself. But it's, it's that, that quality I needed. And I, I felt like just walking in the woods and stuff gave me a load of that. I don't know Absolutely. if it would be a similar experience for women or not. But for me, that was definitely part of how I, how I made it through those 40 days. 
I, I can totally relate to that. It's not for nothing that in pretty much all languages, the earth is referred to as feminine, right? It's her, it's Pachamama, it's mother earth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's she holding us and she, well, if we go a bit more into esoteric tantra, we could speak about Shiva and Shakti and yada, da, da, da. All the words mean shit if I don't put them in the right context. But Shakti being the manifested, the manifested reality and often equated with the feminine. So the whole of nature and your body is nature. That's why it will resonate when you bring it into contact with nature. Yeah. Be in contact with the elements as much as you can. The air on your skin, the sun on your face, walk bare feet on the earth if you can, lay yourself down on the earth. If you can't, if you're really locked down in an apartment and you have no access to nature, find a window you can open. Open that window, invite sunlight on your face. No. What, like worst case scenario, put on a thick winter coat if it's really chilly and windy outside and sit in front of that window, read a book or do movement exercises in front of that window, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. hug your chamber plant, <laughs> <laughs> whatever it I got is. My next to me on the computer all day long. It's beautiful, yeah. <laughs> it's my big feminine lily here, yeah, my smile. Actually, the reason it's in here is because my wife said it stunk too much to be in the living room, so I have to have the lily. <laughs> I was like, darling, I brought you beauty to save us through the hard times. She was like, it stinks, get it out of my room. So, okay, so now I've got a nice lily in my office. It's not a bad thing. So, um, good communication, see, nice and clear, made the request. So, hmm, yeah. And also, I guess, also to say, a lot of the time people confuse sexual needs for other needs. So I notice when during that um, period of celibacy that I have, that I, that I did, I was still getting a lot of touch and I was still getting a lot of really good emotional connection with people. And actually the need for sex was much lower than I thought because I was normally combining those things, you see. And then when I separate them out, I was like, oh, okay, I still, I'm still kind of horny and I still kind of would rather get laid right now, if I'm honest. But it wasn't as bad as I thought. And I, I know some people might be listening to this and going, oh, 40 days, that's nothing. But for most men to last 40 days without an orgasm, unless they're tantric people, is, you know, it's pretty unusual. And it, was, um, it wasn't that difficult. I was going to say it wasn't that hard, but that wouldn't be the case at all. Um, it, was, it wasn't that tricky because I was able to get a lot of love and affection and connection and other needs met. And we're seeing this in the embodiment circles, for example. People are online connecting in a really beautiful way. And I, I think that eases people's loneliness a lot. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, there are many ways to go about this. Of course, the difference between your celibacy and the celibacy we're experiencing right now, well, for some of us, is that it's choice. Yeah, and that, that makes it very different, doesn't it? Yeah. And, and I think there is a way of, I mean, surrender turns circumstance into choice. But that's the exactly. power of surrender, right? As you say, well, this has happened, but I choose to accept even though you didn't choose the thing that they, that's when you enter into choice and that's got a very different quality than victimhood exactly yeah mm. so there is there is actually a lot of empowerment in this situation i find and i do indeed find that surrender is the key and i also see around me that surrender comes relatively easy in this situation because it's such um I don't quite know the English word for this. Like the, the force of the pandemic is of such a vast scale. Like an archetypal kind of epic exactly. kind of power, isn't it? Yeah. We can't, like the individual cannot fight it. So yeah. we cannot as an individual change it. So all that remains is to surrender. Yeah, it's like being, a lot up easier. In a war or being on a volcano when it erupts. Is a, there's a quality of just yeah. like, hey, this is nature doing its thing. It's something much bigger. Than, than than my own life so okay i have to surrender to it and i mean i'm seeing people yeah. suffer directly in proportion to their ability to surrender right now like the people i'm uh -huh. seeing suffering and the people i'm seeing not suffering to actually maybe enjoying or learning even like those people that, that's directly correlated to that one single trait creativity is pretty important right now i'm seeing like how to be creative in your relationship how to be creative in your business but surrender is maybe the biggest one Okay, how about this? What if this frame flips now to how to survive the apocalypse, 
to <laughs> the sexual apocalypse, to how to make the most of it as a learning and growth experience with your partner? Yes. Yeah. So, so how do we do that? <laughs> how do we do that? We, um, we uh, go and look for practices to embark on together and a few very simple, well, first of all, creating that time and space midday to actually explore intimacy with each other in the light and apply your communication tools also in the bedroom because many people forget how they work when sexual energy is involved. So slow down, slow down, slow down and become very aware. Hey, what is it I actually like? What is it I actually want? What is it my body yearns for? And you're going to also learn this through clear communication because clear communication is going to help you listen to your body in order to bring it into contact with your partner. And so this we can apply in the bedroom as well. And it's really, it's a matter of training because most of us are looking at, well, take the number of uh, your age. That's the amount of years you've been conditioned into a certain type of sexuality, into a certain type of arousal, into a certain type of relating, uh, not necessarily with one another. That depends on the length of your relationship and the amount you're working on it. But there is a whole lot of deconditioning to do. So also, please be compassionate and take it with a lot of light and playfulness. So play around with each other and have spaces where uh, you can really say okay now it's your turn to say for an hour how can i pleasure you okay my lunch break's only an hour so can we do half an hour both ways is that, is that... <laughs> we can do half an hour both ways absolutely <laughs> <laughs> it's fun to, to, to play that game you know and i know people do this like wheel of consent people a betty martin type style of, of just like hey just let me just be of service what do you want and then there's mm -hmm. something about that that kind of forces both people into a role of like one person into like actually being really willing to ask and the other person to really check in like, hey, is this actually okay with me? Do I want to do this? Exactly. Exactly. Because you can always reply and you shoot if that's your truth with, I can't do that for you. What else can I do for you? Yeah, I would say I won't rather than I can't. I mean, that's quite an important distinction for me. Absolutely. Yeah, that's English. Okay. It's a linguistic yeah. thing. Yeah. Mm. Okay. What else? What else? How do people, what if people are just a sort of a little bit bored of, you know, Friday night sex and it's the same old thing with their partner and they're on lockdown. So there's even more, any, any tips for spicing things up in the, um, in this situation? Yeah. You're going to have to meet each other again. And in order to do that, you're first going to have to meet yourself again. And you might meet yourself in contact with your partner, though it's easier to meet yourself separately. So what I would recommend any couple, actually, is to have a, a sexual practice together, but also a sexual practice apart. Go and explore. What do I really like? What turns me on? Because most often when it gets boring in the bedroom, we forgot. We forgot what really, what uh -oh. really spices us up. Spices. And maybe there are funky fantasies and maybe it's super scary to bring them into contact and they might not happen, but even bringing them into contact creates space for a new possibility to open up. Cool. 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 Um, and I can't not say this uh, being a Tantra girl, invite sacredness and consciousness in your sexual play. And what I mean with that is, when we make love, we are creating something. If it's not a baby, we are creating a specific type of energy. And that specific type of energy can be fused with an intention. So what do we want to create? Is that horniness? Is that, uh, what did you just say uh, 20 minutes ago? Uh, go for the orgasm. <laughs> race is to the orgasm. What, race to the orgasm. What is it we want to create? Is that love? Is that clarity? is that infuse your lovemaking with an intention. This can be such a beautiful practice, but maybe you need a few steps before that, like discovering, really discovering your own body. That's... Um, I feel like I should kind yeah. of represent the lower chakras here too, you know, because often I feel like the tantric people, they're obsessed with spiritual sex and heart sex, both of which are great, right? But I also go, sometimes what's missing is just the heart animal fucking. Like, that seems like to me like that... 
also there's types of people, right? There's people whose sexuality is much more energetic, people it's much more just genital and physical. I mean, there are different types of people, I reckon, in this world. It's, there are different preferences, I would say. Yeah. So not necessarily, I mean, types, preferences, um, just how you want to call it, but the real fun starts when we have that broad range and we can choose. Do I want raw animalistic sex? Do I want uplifted heart sex? Do I want everything exploding in my seventh chakra? I mean, if we're going to make fun, you know. <laughs> Am I playing in between those ranges? The, the freedom comes when we can choose. Uh -huh. And of course, the tantricas, don't get me wrong, they, it's not all coconut oil and candlelight and palo santo and prayer and I, I'm sorry, I'm not, my, my, sorry, my dick's the limpest it's ever been after you've said all that. That's, I'm sorry, that's like that. <laughs> <laughs> Listeners, Chris and I have interacted before, just for the record. She's not a complete... <laughs> this is how I would treat a guest or a man for the first time. But cross the line. Thanks, Mark. Okay. That's, that's, that's good, just good. You get special bad treatment. I kind of trust, I, I trust that you'll tell me if I cross the line. Am I, am I right there? I will. Yeah, it's actually my, you get Dutch lady on me. So, hmm. So I think that might help people. Yeah. Anything else? Anything we haven't kind of covered that you think would be useful? I could expand on all of these topics uh, a lot more. Make sure to have fun together. Maybe pick up a new hobby together, like go and try, I don't know, acro yoga or, or something like that. Do a video off the internet, download acro yoga for <laughs> <and> <laughs> yourself. No exactly. But, okay. but I mean, it's a very dangerous thing to gonna, because there is so much negativity in the news right now. Yeah, yeah we've got to be careful of watching the news together too much and just getting into it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Have fun. Have fun. Spread laughter. <clears throat> Be aware of what energy you're inviting into your mm -hmm. space and into your mm -hmm. interaction. Yeah. I think that's a nice way of, of looking at it. It's like, am I a gift to my partner right now? Like, am I bringing a certain vibe, a certain way of being, a certain energy, if you will, to my partner? Is that going to be a gift? And if I'm bringing it, if it's not, and I'm doing that every day, how's that going to end up? You know yeah, what I mean? That's beautiful. It's like, how's that going to end up? And so that, that's something I'm aware of. It's like, okay, is, am I nagging again? Am I being critical again? Am I just being like expecting this person to emotionally uplift me and being grumpy again? You know, because like, if I keep leaning on a person emotionally that way, sooner or later they're going to get tired of it. They're going to go, you know what? This isn't a gift. You're taking, the, am I giving or taking emotionally? I think it's kind of an interesting question. You know, I don't, I don't want to get into like energetic vampires and that kind of bullshit, but like just that question, am I giving or taking emotionally right now? Like, I feel like that's a useful question. And not that it's wrong to be taking, but that if that's all you ever do, maybe that relationship's out of whack. Well, and it's uh, key to become aware of it. Most, well, let's not make that statement. Many people, um, are not aware whether they are draining energy of another person or uh, uh, enriching or like exactly thank you so there needs to be an awareness if you are walking away from every interaction with your partner feeling i'm exhausted that can give you a clue if right. you walk away from every interaction from your partner feeling uplifted, but you see they are exhausted, that can give you a clue. <laughs> so become aware of your energy system, of your partner's energy system, and become very transparent about it. There is nothing wrong with needing something from one another. We need to represent many roles from one for one another in a partnership. Yeah, That's yeah. actually supernatural. But become transparent. It's like, hey... I am feeling shit and like a three-year-old and can you hold me in this? Can you stay present with me in this? Instead of pretending it's not there and still needing it from the other person. Uh -huh. uh, I remember the, the first time we met in a cafe in Utrecht, right from the start of us being friends, it was a conversation of like, are we, it was like crazy energetic, like, whoa, like loads of, and then it was like, oh, and then I sort of, oh, you, look, you're, I'm exhausting you a little bit. I'll chill out a little bit, you know, like just being able to have that conversation live and in the moment 
is a yeah. really useful conversation for you to have, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Nice. Yeah, just being transparent. It's it's uh, it's easy yet not simple, or the other way around, simple yet not easy. Okay. Well, I kind of feel like we're coming to starting to come to a natural close here. I feel like when I'm interviewing people, I often notice a sort of release in my body or relaxation after a certain period of time. And um, yeah, anything else before we start to wrap up? There's a couple of things to close with. I usually do. No. Editor, these big pauses, you can leave them in. That's that's like when hippies like need to feel their intuition in their body, they just need these space. Okay. This is a good thing. So editor, don't take the, that's the third one, don't take them out. They're a good example. But it's good that a pause is good that you can just take a moment to feel, right? Like a lot of people don't do that. <clears throat> yeah. For the record, listeners, Chris is uh, laughing and uh, thinks I'm funny and cool, just just in case you can't see her face. Okay, Chris, this has been well, a delight. Oh, more? There's more? Go on. We have time. Maybe uh, maybe, um, maybe two more tiny things. Um, is that you really... I'm just thinking of people in isolation because this is evidently the topic of this call, intimacy and isolation. And both if you're single or if you're together, find ways of expressing yourself. So really use... I. I'm sure if you're listening to this series, you've heard it a million times before, but breath, movement, sound, it's so, so, so important to infuse it into your daily practice, find mm -hmm. ways to move, to dance, and find a common practice. So if you are in lockdown with your partner, a common practice, and that can be a common yoga practice, a common mm -hmm. meditation practice, a common dance, whatever you might want to learn uh, salsa together. There must be internet classes on that. But find something in which your togetherness is emphasized in, a, in again, a way that you allocate time and space for that. Because that's going to help you keep your, uh, in Dutch we say, keep your nose in the same direction. I think you might say <laughs> so in English too. I'm not sure. No, no, we don't say that, <laughs> but it makes sense. I like it. Keep yeah. your nose in the same direction. <laughs> And have a, cre a, a practice of gratitude. Don't shy away to thank each other. Only if you mean it. We do this Super important. Yeah, yeah. But so important to keep on voicing your appreciation to one another. We can relax in that. Mm. Yeah. Cool. Okay, I'll leave it here. Okay, well, thank you, Val. And thank you to all our Dutch listeners out there who I'm, I'm teasing at the moment for some reason. I don't know why. Well, they're one of our biggest listener groups, actually. So anything you want to say in Dutch for our Dutchies listening? Fijn dat je geluisterd hebt. Dankjewel. Dat je erbij bent. Ja, nee, verder eigenlijk niet meer. There we go. There we go. So I'm calling this love in the time of COVID. Beautiful. Like love in the time of cholera. See what I did? Come on, that's creative. Uh, and uh, where do people find you on the internet if they want to check you out? See what you're all about. Unvealingintimacy.com. That's www.unvealingintimacy.com. Cool. And closing message about the body. Do you have a closing message about the body? A closing message about the yeah. body. Yeah. You don't <laughs> you listen to my fucking that podcast. Out, That's, this is the, no editor. Leave that in. Leave that shit in. <laughs> closing <laughs> message about the body. The body is your home. It's your temple. Please take it as a sacred pl space, place. Feed it. Nourish it. It's your guide. Learn to listen to it and then learn how to respond to the messages it's communicating with you. Chris, thank you so much for tolerating me today. You're welcome, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pleasure, Mark. <laughs>